What is going on, everybody? So today on Dylan Talks Tone, we're going to kind of dive in a little bit to how pickups are made, and we're going to talk specifically magnetization. So how we get magnets here at Dylan Talks Tone, how we magnetize them, and I got a new toy. Everything here at Dylan Talks Tone, we make from scratch. So if you look at all this stuff, you'll see a bunch of parts. We've got slugs for humbuckers. We've got the little keeper bars for humbuckers. We've got bobbins for humbuckers, right? And we've got all the various screws and base plates and wire and all the kind of stuff that we use to make pickups. And of course, over by the winder, we've got coil wire and that sort of stuff. The other thing we have, magnets. So this is how the magnets come to us. Uh, this is Alnico 5. Well, this is what we use for a lot of our stuff. Uh, this is We have a bunch of different measurements, but this is what we use for a lot of our stuff. I usually order, oh, I don't know, 5,000 of them at a time or something. That's quite a bit. And then we or, these are our Alnico 5 humbucker magnets. And we order, I don't know, a couple thousand of these at a time too. Lasts a couple months. Constant battle. Parts is parts is parts. It's always, it's always that when you're making stuff. Of course, over here we've got our little wax pot that we're probably going to have to upgrade soon because it's just not keeping up. And then, of course, wire, winder. We have three of those. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how we magnetize magnets. Okay, so when we get magnets in from the magnet manufacturer, uh, they are what you would call unoriented. So let's take a screwdriver and let's, like, they don't, they're not magnetized at all. Okay, so that one isn't, and neither are the humbucker magnets. Like, there's no, they don't stick whatsoever. So the question is, how do you magnetize a magnet? Uh, there are some pretty simple and effective ways to do that. I'll put a link to in the description to a Stumac uh, piece that is right here. It actually is the one that I used to have. In fact, I still have that magnet set up, um, but it's in Colorado at Texas Toast Guitars because when we go out there and do our pickup winding workshops, we have to be able to magnetize magnets. So I have some duplicates of some stuff, and that's where this particular version of it is. But basically all it is is a couple of little magnets that you would put then in like a little bench top vise like this. This particular one is the Mojo Tone one, uh, and it's got some bar magnets in it. Now when you see that picture that I just showed you of those Stumac magnets, you could just say, well, I could just order some uh, neodymium, which is what they are, magnets off of Amazon, and, you know, I could stick them in a vise and everything would be fine. The measurements need to be kind of right. I would recommend getting the Stumac ones because they work. I actually used those little cheap magnets for years. They did thousands of pickups. They're fantastic. They work perfectly. The only reason I upgraded, quote unquote, to the Mojo Tone one is because I needed a duplicate. So I brought the Stumac one out to Colorado, and I kept this one here. So let me show you how this works. And we've also got a gauss meter that I just got off of Amazon. I'll leave it in the description below. I'll link to it in the description below so you can check your magnets too. Pretty cool. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you how we magnetize pickup magnets. All right, so first of all, let's just do this. Let's turn on our gauss meter and we'll take it from Militesla to gauss so that it's in the right scale. We'll take our little probe, we'll put it on the side of the magnet, and this needs to contact the magnet in the center of the, see it says zero, zero, 001, whatever. So now if we went over here to this magnet, see how it would say, whoo, 3400, something like that? That's pretty strong. Okay, so you can see a magnet that works, and now you can see a magnet that doesn't work. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead, we'll just leave that land there, we're going to put this in between those two magnets and we're going to make this depth just to where we can pass that magnet back and forth. And we're just going to pass this back and forth a few times. Let's just do this, shall we? Just a few times. Let's see, six. Yeah, six eighties. That's, that's cool. 
for an Alnico 5. That's cool. Now, here's the thing. If I hold this on here wrong, it starts to go away. It's got to be in the right spot, right? So you got to consistently know how to measure a magnet. So, but there you go. And we have successfully magnetized this particular magnet. Now, what if you want to do a single coil? Then we would take a single coil assembled bobbin, and I actually do these after I wind them usually. We put that between there. And we pass that between there a couple times. And now we measure it. 1018. Now here's the thing, this, these we could probably stand to do again. There's a little inconsistency here and you have to know kind of how many passes you want, how, how you want it to look, right? So the trick with this kind is basically uh, consistency. You want to do it the same way every time and have something to measure it because you need to be able to make sure that it's consistent. Now, a lot of people will say, well, what if I wanted to go and I'll knock, I'll knock a five magnet, but I want to like undercharge it like a three. It's actually really kind of hard to do that. Only a few passes are going to get you past what an Alnico three is. Um, so it's kind of hard to undercharge. Uh, it's easier to just get the correct magnet, basically, especially when you're doing it at volume. Now, if you want to buy a bunch and experiment, but here's the problem it's difficult to unmagnetize a magnet. So if you surpass where the gauze is that you want, it's kind of hard to undo that. Um, anyway, that's, that's the thing. So basically passing a strat style bobbin or a telly style bobbin or something like that between those two magnets and doing that. And you can see on this particular one that these are marked. Now those little magnets that I showed you earlier are not marked. Um, you just have to use your little Shatten polarizing magnet and that little dude flips over from white to black to show you what polarity a magnet is. This is a handy little tool to have in your drawer even if you just have a bunch of pickups because if you're trying to figure out pickup phasing this thing is kind of nice because it's got the little dude that flips over and you can tell that it's south up north. south north because the little magnet flips over. This is a really cool, I'll leave a link to this in the description too. So that's how I check what polarity it is. This particular one is marked, so that's kind of nice. So once you get those other ones that I showed you and you put them in a vise, figure out what the polarity is. You want one on north and one on south facing opposite directions, and then just mark it with a Sharpie. That's what my other vise that I have in Colorado. It just, it's marked with a Sharpie north and south so that you know. Well now, what if we want to do a bunch of these? What if we want to make sure that it's 100% consistent all the time, but we also uh, need to do, let's say, you know, like today, we need to make like 20 P90s, something like that. Well, each P90 gets two of these. So now I've got to do 40 of these things, sit there, go back and forth, and let me tell you, it's tedious. So, if you're gonna need ultimate consistency and you need more volume, I got a new toy. This bad boy is the Magnetool Electromagnet Control. So what we have here, this thing weighs 45 pounds. And what we have here is a humongous transformer uh, with coils, it's not, well, two big coils. There's one here and one here. And basically what this thing does is it magnetizes a magnet when you put it between these two plates. Uh, you can see I've got one tightened up and I've got one loose. That's because I want to be able to slide this back and forth for whatever width that I want, if that makes sense. See what I'm saying? And once I figured out what the polarity was, again, I just marked it with a Sharpie. So it's not making magnetism right now because the switch has not been pressed. This is a momentary switch, okay? It says, intent magnetic field present. If you have a pacemaker, hearing aid, or any other sensitive equipment, it must be kept 10 feet away. So, uh, when I use this, I take my cell phone out of my pocket, and I actually will take my Apple Watch off too. Let's do a little demo of this thing. I've got an unmagnetized, so it doesn't stick to any metal anywhere. And we can take our 
polarizing thing and see that it doesn't do anything. There's no magnetism to this whatsoever. So what we do is we put this in between here, push these plates together so it doesn't smack together, and literally hit this switch for one second. That magnet is fully magnetized in one second. So that means we can do as many of those things as we want, and we can do them as fast as we want, and they're consistent, fully charged, and 100% consistent in one second. It's within like 15 of the other one that I did, both of those together. So there you go, pretty cool. Anyway, it's a fun thing. It's a great tool. Uh, now I can put my watch back on since I'm done using it because the switch is off. It's just a momentary switch. So there you go. Um, it's really been helping us out since we've had it. I've had it, I've had it about a week or so, and it's really sped up. And I've been double checking measurements and all that kind of stuff. And I just feel like it's really super consistent. And I'm really, really stoked to have it. It is. By the time you get it shipped, it's about $900, so it's not cheap. But because of the volume that we do here, uh, you can imagine the amount of pickups, the magnets that we go through. And so I'm very stoked to be able to have um, a tool that helps us do that stuff. So there you go. Thanks for hanging out. I just wanted to show you A, a new tool, and B, a couple of things that you could use not only to magnetize magnets, but to repair them. Uh, and a couple of little tools like this thing that I think every guitar player who has a pile of parts in their, you know, in their uh, drawer, hobby drawer to have, this little tool is super helpful. This thing is cool, I'll leave a link to it down below as well, and I'll leave a link to the, the more affordable, I think they're under $20, Shatten magnets. Like I said, you could go on Amazon if you want, but A, I found that they're not strong enough, and B, uh, they're not the, the right size. So uh, I have experimented with Amazon magnets before and the ones that you get from Stumac are way, way cheaper, are way, way more effective. Maybe they're not cheaper, but they're way more effective. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you in the next video. Do me a favor, like, subscribe, share this. Thank you to all of my Patreon supporters who help make a lot of this stuff possible as far as our gear reviews and all that kind of stuff because that's where all that comes from. So thank you so much for all that and we will see you tomorrow in our podcast.